people? Yeah, it works. Remember what I said about Bird Marsh? If you have 50 people, you need 12 items. That's pretty close to that kind of rule of thumb. Uh, one kind of question, in this changed model, so you have uh, loadings, which is, for example, 0 0.27, which is uh, Pretty low, so you could go, this model might run, it might be legal, but it might not fit very well. And if you wanted to play with it, you could go around killing problematic items. But for the purposes of the, thank you for giving me this data, let me tell you something about it. This worked, it made sense, and it was okay enough for just a technical report to my participants. Does that make sense? So, that never got published in an article because N was 82. Here's another one. Here's my original teacher conceptions of assessment. Irrelevance, improvement, student accountability, school accountability. This is my original model. But, It didn't work for a new group. This had worked with New Zealand sec primary teachers. This worked with Queensland primary teachers. But Queensland high school teachers, it didn't work. Damn. So, what did I do? There was one, obviously, where's the item I took out? I think it's here, right here. I took out one item, and suddenly this model works for the new group. So it's like, hmm, you have to study that item. The alternative solution, which we ended up publishing, was we added some extra paths for the high school teachers. Because as children get older, assessment changes what it's for. We hope, at least in our country, that in primary school, Assessment is mostly for this, describing how to make things better for kids. Improvement is, that's our policy. And in Queensland, the policy for primary school teachers was pretty much the same. And when you go to high school in Queensland or New Zealand, high school teachers now give assessments so they can give you qualifications. So you get credits towards your higher school certificate. So that meant that this new relationship existed in that population. Mm -hmm. That judging students for accountability was related to, you have to describe them. That makes sense. And that improving student learning was somehow connected to a assessment is not accurate. The assessments we give, the teachers know that sometimes the assessments are wrong. The higher the stakes, the more sensitive people are to the error component, the inaccuracy. How did you find this person? You just try all Thank goodness we didn't have to do that. That's one way. That's the, the machine way. Just try everything. Fortunately, there's modification in disease, and that's what really suggested these things. And I'll come to modification in disease. Okay. You had so a question, and then you. It didn't fit based on indices. I mean, you can't see on the structure. No, you can't see it here, but. All factor analysis machines will do a little dance behind the scenes. You can ignore it, or you can say, show me what you found, that if I added it to the model, would make it fit better. Or if I took it away, that would make it fit better. So those things, that information is being processed in the back room. You can choose not to look at it. I also want to ask, on the correlation between the main factors, 
it should be not your requirement, otherwise it is the same factor. Yeah. How, but what numbers do you use? Uh -huh. Anything over 0.90 should make you really worried, and reviewers will say, come on, you're kidding us, right? These aren't two things. So you would have to do an analysis that says, I put them together, I pulled them apart, which one's better, and can I explain why? One of my students, her thesis had very strongly correlated factors, but we argued to keep them, and the reviewers accepted that. And the correlation was high? 0.93. <laughs> but they were sufficient. The, we ran the model both ways, and it worked better by keeping the two factors, even though they were highly correlated. So, reviewers will ask you the question. Examiners will ask you, how do you know it isn't one? And the answer is, well, that was a that's a really good question. I ran it both ways, because I was concerned too. And it seems that the fit is better by keeping them apart. And there's reason in the literature for keeping them apart. Maxine. Yes, I have questions about how you do the paths, because the first path is a high order factor to the low order. Mm -hmm. But the second one path that is uh, below, they were at the same level. Yes. And you moved to the level of next. Of yeah. Of I know. Uh, but why didn't you have pass from, for example, from improvement to an, an accurate? So it is not a statistical framework. And improvement from, sorry. Yeah, so from, the from here to... No, 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 from uh, improvement mm -hmm. yeah, to the... Yes, to the uh, I probably tried it and it didn't work as good as this one. Okay. Uh, so I'm taking advantage of the chan of chance. Yeah, so and, the, the next one about the, 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 uh, the second thing, yeah, why you didn't have a uh, pass from students learning to items that is related with an uh, upgrade? Ah. So, this is many years ago now, so my, my recollection is I was trying to keep each of the first order factors simple structure. Okay. And, uh, but I, it might work better if this loaded those items rather than had this relationship. And at the time, 10 years ago, more than that, um, I didn't think of doing that. Okay, and last questions about this. Uh, because uh, new models uh, is kind of uh, expanded of the previous one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is for new uh, uh, extended, uh, because this is for new group, for new population, but did you try this new model to your old population? Maybe I it, have can, it can be work for all population as well, and in this case it is this, mod, this new model starts to be more universal. That's a really insightful question. And I can tell you, we actually did this last year, and published it this year in Frontiers in Education, and the answer is no model. So this Queensland model only works for Queensland. <laughs> the New Zealand model only works for Queensland primary and no one else. The India model only works for India. <laughs> you know, the Cyprus model only works for Cyprus. I actually, we went through a systematic invariance test of all models against all data sets and the only model that seemed to have configural invariance across all the data sets was a very small set of items that had been identified in India and so it was a uh, we didn't use the whole scale of inventory in India and so those smaller set of numbers items worked and what I conclude from all of this in cross-cultural research is inventories don't travel very well. 
like good wine doesn't travel very far. <laughs> right? That's really what it boils down to. It might work in your country, but it probably won't work in my country, but it's really interesting and I want to know about my teachers. Fine. The factors might work, but the structure might not. And the factors might not even work because they weren't developed in your context anyway. So all of us who go around borrowing inventories from other people's research should not be surprised if the factor scale structures don't work. Invented in America does not mean it will work in Russia. Or New Zealand or possibly not even in Canada. Right? So, uh, my confidence in cross-cultural universals is that cross-cultural universals probably universally do not exist. But similar, the more cultures are similar, the more likely the model will work. So, I'm going to bet, based on as an outsider, that a model developed in Russia will probably work in Ukraine. Now, no guarantee. <laughs> okay. In Belarus. But in countries like your own, they'll probably work. Countries that have similar languages, similar policies and practices, similar social norms, probably going to work. But you're going to test it because you don't believe it, you test it. But Will it work in China just because China and Russia are neighbors? Probably not. One of the things that I've been finding with my cross-cultural research with student beliefs about assessment is there is a lot of similarity between China, India, Egypt. And what do they have in common? It's not Confucius. It's exam systems. High stakes exams for selection and opportunities and a high destruction rate of losers. When countries like that, attitudes towards assessment become very similar. Not because of shared cultural social norms, but because of we use exams to select people for opportunities and we use those exams to reject people. And exam societies Teacher values, student values tend to be very similar because of exams, even if the exams are done differently. Whether it's a three-day exam for Jonkau or however Gaukau, sorry, or however Russia or Azerbaijan does university entrance selection, if you use exams, you'll expect to see similar attitudes, beliefs, practices. It's the policy practice that, not the historical cultural norms, you know, it's not a question of having the Russian soul or German romanticism or Chinese imperial mentality, it's got to do with, we give you exams and if you don't pass or you're not in the top ten, you're a loser. That brutality makes everything the same and separates you from us. Okay, one of the ways to get rid of an inadmissible solution is to parcel, to group things. So we started here with a large number of people, and I showed you yesterday that this model had 22 people. So I, with 22 people, you cannot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items. You just can't run a model with eight variables at time one, eight variables at time two, eight variables at time three, so that's 24 variables with 22 people. You know, that's less than one person per variable. But if you create a factor score out of each group, the model starts to work because you get more people than variables. And what I want to show you here is this was, correlation was 57, and now it's 55. Like, the difference of 0.02 between friends, that's nothing. Right? So, what I'm saying is by 
parceling it into a factor score and a manifest variable, I didn't lose the relationship that I had started with. And it solves the problem of making my model admissible. Factor score was defined as mean? Oh, there's diff lots of different ways and we are going to tackle how to create factor scores. There are uh, probably, there's two major ways. The simple way that psychologists over all, all over the world for the last hundred years have been doing and the fancy way that you need a computer to do. The simple way is to say a 4 plus a 3 plus a 4 plus a 3 it, that's 8 and 6 is 14 divide by 4 that's your score because we have set these items to only load on this factor they don't go over here so we're not we're only using them here so we'll just use your raw score and average it out to create that score that is the most simple way and I have published in learning and instruction using that approach and Almost nobody in the psychological education world will care. The stat geeks will go, oh, 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 this is not good. And I'm going to show you how to create a stat geek supportable score in Levan using the Bartlett method where you multiply the score by the weight and at, get a total for that. And I don't need to know how Bartlett works, I just need to know that Bartlett works. <laughs> Maxime, you laugh at me, that's funny. He's a mathematician, he probably knows how the Bartlett factor score system actually works. Hey, I'm more interested in the substance, the so what question, right? And I, I read the literature and it says, Bartlett is best. So, okay, how do I do Bartlett? Ah, there it is. Let's do that. Um, I, I want to ask about um, residuals. So we see that for some indicators, we have very high residuals. And also, I would like to understand, like Mars and all that, can we correlate residuals within one factor, not like between different factors to improve the view? I mentioned this yesterday, and you're seeing me break my recommendation. Two manifest variables that are predictors in a model cannot be correlated directly. You can't correlate two manifest variables. But every manifest variable has an error component. If you put the error, res the, the covariance on the error component, that is conceptually identical to correlating the factor structure. And I only do this because I have a manifest indicator in a path model, but I want these two things to be correlated. They're not independent. How can I show in the model that they're not independent? Only by correlating the residuals in this path model. People will correlate residuals in factors. People do it. Yes, people do it. They shouldn't, in my view. In my view, that's the last resort of the desperate who are seeking to make the model fit so they can get it published. But I have just rejected an article at Frontiers in Psychology because they had really low scale reliabilities, 0.30 something, but had a super good fit in the model in the confirmatory factor analysis. And the editor said, can that happen? Is that, Gavin, is that fair? And I said, well, it looks like they might have correlated the residuals. But they didn't tell that in the paper. Yeah, and if they had told me, mm -hmm. I would have rejected it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no good reason to do it except to inflate fit. Except in certain situations where you say, I have to correlate this because they are meant to be correlated. But these are between factors, not within. Yeah, because I'm trying to mimic this. 
but I don't have enough data to do this. I did this with uh, 180 people. Now I only have 22 people. How can I copy this relationship with not enough data? Okay, parcel, parcel, correlate. Some people go, oh, well you just go, regress, regress. <coughs> That's really stupid, just correlate. So in this case, I'm trying to show these two components are not independent. So it's a different reason for doing this. Excuse me, but what does uh, the series mean? Because we can't manifest variables. Sorry, say again, please, Maxim. Uh, what does that uh, zero mean? Ah, okay. I've switched on the display, the... Um, so is it actual zero or zero for point of point? This is... No, no, no. This is the... Remember the seed value is one here and here, just like it would be one here. Yeah. Here I've shown the square, R square value. This is the R square value of this. This does not explain that. There is zero explanation. This is just, I'm at the beginning. Of course I don't have an explanation. Nothing, I don't have anything in my data set to be able to explain that in the first place. Which would be, why do you write the way you do? Well, I'd have to collect information about all your teaching experiences, your IQ, how your mom and dad were, and what, what your teachers taught you, and how good you were at writing back when you were grade one, and maybe when you first learned to write a letter correctly. And, you know, I need to go back to the beginning. So there is no beginning, so this has no explanation. Nothing is explained about that. Downstream, the variables are explained. But at the beginning, nothing is explained. It's just there. So this is the variance explained by that. 55 times 55 gives you 30. So on and so forth. This does not explain that. It says, how strongly do these things exist simultaneously? And how coordinated are they? And there are, you know, about 30% shared which means 70% not shared, which means they probably are two separate things, just as I designed them. But really good questions. So this was 86 and this was 20. If a solution is recursive, recursive means, do you understand this word? That's recursive. There's a beginning and an end. That's not recursive because it goes back on itself. This is bad. Factor analysis assumes that your models are recursive, that they go in a straight line that there is a beginning and an end, and the end is not the beginning. It's the name of the novel, isn't it? The beginning is not. Here's what I do. I tend to take away paths and items that are not statistically significant if the factor can support it, and I think there's still enough explanation in the A factor. Items that have high attraction to logically inappropriate factors. In other words, it's not simple structure item. Item 5 wants to be on factor 1, I have factor 2, and factor 5. What? <laughs> Maybe the problem is the items says something that makes it sticky. Weak loadings, they're always candidates because they're not strongly explained. And if you want a good model, everything over 0.40 is probably going to give you a better chance of saying this model fits the covariance matrix. Correlated factor models are usually 
the easiest to get fit. Why? Because everything in a human mind is correlated with everything in a human mind. And the human gave you answers on the test or on the survey, and what they think about X influences how they feel about Y, which is part of why they do Z. Everything is correlated in the human. So, this would probably be the easiest model, but it's also the least interesting model if you're trying to make a change in society. If I want to use my data to try and make a difference, I have to know the causal path, where the levers are that make things happen, rather than just say, oh, I can't do anything, everything is just correlated, it's not out of my control. So why are we paying you so much, you know? Or maybe in Russia you don't feel like you're getting paid very much. You can collapse factors, join them up. And you can parcel factors into scale scores and everything becomes simpler. Can I? About collapsing factors? <coughs> because you can also add a higher order factor. Yes, and I'm going to talk about higher order factors. Absolutely. You could treat it as, well, instead of joining them, like I did, I went, this one explains that one. Again, it might solve the over-correlated factors problem. Um, but in a cross-sectional survey, reviewers will say, yes, but your design isn't causal. Why are you using a causal model in a non-causal data design? And you have to make an argument. You have to have theory and previous evidence to and better fit to say, actually, the causal model makes more sense because it helps us do make recommendations, and it creates, it's not proof of a causal model. A statistical causal model that fits well is not proof, but it allows you to say, in future studies, we're going to experimentally test these relationships. Um, Promising. <laughs> yes. This is the direction we think we should go. And a, a PhD student who does study one survey finds that interesting causal model, study two goes out and finds people at extremes, and study three manipulates them, or treats them in some way, and hey, their scores move in the direction according to the model, that's a good <coughs> PhD. I had one student who was almost on the verge of doing that, and he said, you know, I don't want to be a student anymore. I'm 55 and I can't be bothered. You know, I'm going to go just carry on being a teacher. Modification indices. This is sometimes known as a Lagrange multiplier, a French scientist. If you read science fiction like I do, you might know what a Lagrange point is. It's the point when all the, the gravitational forces in a system become zero and where everything is perfectly balanced. I still, I can spell it. Um, it's an estimated value in which the model's chi-square would go down, that's good because we're getting closer to the data, if a certain parameter were added and freely estimated. In other words, what could we do, what could we change that would make the model you gave me even closer to the structural covariance matrix that we're trying to estimate? Now, of course, this could be, I'm just going to add extra things, which means I'm not keeping it simple. I'm making it more complicated. And remember, our goal is to be simpler. Values of an MI of 3.84 will be statistically significant. But frankly, unless it's 20, it probably won't make any freaking difference. Okay? In all my work, and I've played with MI a lot, I always start, in Amos, I always say, don't show me anything below 20. And you can do this in Jamobi too. You can just tell it, like, I, don't show me the little ones, show me the big ones, because that's all I'm interested in. 
So this allows you to identify paths that could be added to your model that should make the fit better. Or, which is what I do, do more. Rather than adding more paths, I look for items or factors that should be changed or deleted. Like, if there's a modification index that says TI4 should be correlated with TI5 and your fit will improve, that tells me one of those should go. Keep the one with the strongest loading, throw the other one out, and the fit will improve because you're removing